Hey everyone, Ripley with Bob's Watches. Welcome to another episode of Unboxing. Every single day we get in dozens of boxes. Every single box has at least one watch, so we're gonna open one up on camera and let you join in on the fun of seeing what's inside. Today we have a really big box, and it's a heavy box. So, I wanna see what's inside. I imagine it's gonna be something with its original manufacturer's box because there's no need to ship just a watch in anything this big. The obligatory bubble wrap. And inside cardboard box number one is another cardboard box. And I can tell you right now already from here it is an Omega. Now what Omega remains to be seen? Inside box number two is another box which inside that will be a sleeve for a different box. Now we have the actual watch box and inside the third box is another box. Although this one is a fabric box this time uh, and in there it does appear to be a full kit. It also appears to be a Speedmaster in case you haven't been able to see that. I've legitimately lost count of how many boxes we've or have opened, it's like a Russian nesting doll. But that's what I always joke about, when you buy an Omega, you don't actually buy it just a watch, you buy an entire treasure chest full of trinkets and one of those things is a watch. So, what kind of Speedmaster do we have today? Oh, whoa, this is a killer Speedmaster, okay. This is, well, first of all, let's just go over what you get in it. You get this, uh, you get your, of course, your box, you get your warranty cards, your pictogram cards, you get a little Omega loop so you can check out the fine workmanship, and you get not one, but two different straps. One of them's a NATO, one of them's a Velcro thing. You also get a spring bar tool, some extra spring bars, all that good stuff, and this rather large challenge coin, which paperweight or something, uh, but it's yours anyway. Anyway, so let's get to the watch. Okay, so this is the new Omega 321. Um, I, it's, oh, let me see if I can get it to reference number. 311.30.40.30.01.001? No one uses these numbers. Anyway, so what this is, is the, this is the new Omega Speedmaster with the old reborn 321 movement. So this is a new watch. It first came out uh, in 2020, but I think the story of this watch is actually its movement. In uh, 2019, Omega announced that they were gonna revive the legendary caliber 321. Now why the 321 is important is because it was the movement used to power all of the moon watches that actually went to the moon. So it was the movement that was used in the first ones that went through NASA testing. It was the one that first stepped out onto the moon, and it was also the movement that was inside the last one, the last watch worn on the moon. Uh, and the interesting story about that is that the uh, Gene Kernan's watch, which is the one that Omega took from the Omega, from the NASA museum, digitally scanned to make what is in this watch, which is the new 321. So it's basically the exact same as the old legendary 321 that's in the vintage Speedmasters, but reborn for the modern era. It's basically a one-to-one -one carbon copy. Um, one of the main and really only differences is the, that it has a Sedna rose gold finished bridges rather than copper like on the original one, but beyond that it really is a old movement being manufactured today. Uh, what that means is it is not anti-magnetic, it is not chronometer certified, it is not uh, meta certified or anti-magnetic or anything like that. It is an old 321 movement that Omega is making again today. Um, they, it took them over two years to create this project. Um, it's all the work is carried out in a dedicated facility at their HQ and the entire movement, uh, assembly, regulation, all of that is performed by a single watchmaker. So what this is, is the top of the line Speedmaster um, and its price reflects it. It costs about twice as much at retail as a normal Speedmaster. However, you can't really buy one at retail, just like with a lot of hyper desirable modern sports watches. Um, production of this is more or less fixed, and because of that, there is a waiting list and they do trade hands for a premium on the open market. The reason for the production being fixed is because it's all carried out in this dedicated facility and a one watchmaker is doing the whole soup to nuts assembly of the movement. Production's kind of capped, they can't really scale it up, and so it's probably the most desirable current production Speedmaster alongside the new Snoopy, both of which you can't really get at retail without a wait. As you can immediately tell when looking at the Speedmaster, it's different from the modern moon watches that Omega also sells alongside it. Um, well, it's got these straight lugs, so 
it's, you know, it has that vintage aesthetic. It's got a step dial, applied markers, dot over 90 bezel. But here's where things start to get a bit different. The bezel's actually made out of ceramic with a white enamel scale. The crystal's actually sapphire instead of hesalite like the original model. And if you flip it over, you're also greeted with a sapphire display case back so you can see that stunning reborn caliber 321 movement in there. Uh, I'm not sure if you can see and get a good view of it right there. Um, now, I'm sure a lot of purists would rather have this watch have a closed case back in a has like crystal. Um, however, you know, the the reason you're buying this watch is because it has the 3 to one movement and um, it just kind of makes sense that they're showing it off in such a spectacular fashion. How is this watch different? Why is it important? The grail in terms of vintage Speedmasters are those with 3 to one movements, um, and typically the older they get, the more expensive they are. Uh, now, there's not all that many 3 to one Speedmasters. In, they stopped producing at the end of the 60s, and so ever since that point, you haven't been able to get one outside of a vintage watch. The first watch to feature it was made out of solid platinum, which put it outside the price point for many collectors. However, this one, when it followed up the next year in 2020, was the model everyone was waiting for, and it is still sold out at retailers, so if you want one uh, in a hurry, and don't want to wait, the pre-owned market is going to be your best bet. So because this, uh, the new Ed White, uh, this three, new 321 Speedy is inspired by the vintage models, it doesn't have those twisted lugs, it doesn't have the crown guards between the uh, crown and the pushers, so its case measures 39.7 millimeters, it's got 19 lugs instead of 20, and it also has this kind of modern version of a flat link bracelet, so it's very similar to a vintage watch, but it is modern uh, from the ceramic bezel to the sapphire crystals to the you know completely solid link bracelet with a machined clasp. It is a modern watch, but it's almost as if they recreated the vintage watch with the modern technology, including a modern version of the vintage movement. As mentioned, you have a dot over 90 bezel despite the fact that it is made out of ceramic, and even though the crystal is made out of synthetic sapphire, you all have that tiny engraved Omega logo just like you would find on the Hesslite models right in the center there. Um, additionally, the loom has a slight tint to it, so it does lean into that vintage aesthetic a bit more, but what this really is is the modern Speedmaster for the true Speedmaster connoisseur. Uh, like I said, at retail, this watch costs about twice the price of a standard production Speedmaster. Both watches are stainless steel, but this isn't the watch for someone who just wants a regular Speedmaster. This is within the steel Speedmaster family. This is the top of the line model. This is the one everyone wants. Um, at retail, it costs as much as a Rolex Daytona, but what you get with it is the modern version of the watch that was uh, first worn in the first American spacewalk, the reference 105. And that's the watch that largely informs this uh, watch's overall design. In terms of modern Omega Speedmaster watches, this is the one to own. And proof of that is the fact that it's still sold out at retailers and trades hands for a premium on the pre-owned market. Well, there you have it. Today we got in this stunning Speedy, but what are we going to get in next week? Don't forget to tune in next time to see what came in. And also don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you can stay up to date on our latest video content.